بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم والصلاۃ والسلام علی رسول النبی الکریم مائی ڈیئر ویورس اراؤنڈ دا ورلڈ السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ آئی ویلکم یو ٹو انتر قرآن اسٹڈی سیشن دس از گوئنگ ٹو بی ونڈربل ایکسپیرینس اینڈ دس از گوئنگ ٹو بی فل آف لرننگ اینڈ انلائٹمنٹ بی ود اس ٹل دی اینڈ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو پرزینٹنگ یو the very important surah of the holy quran this is surah shura it is in quranic juz 25th it begins in 25th and it ends in 25th this is surah number 42 and according to the revelation order this is surah number 62 in total this surah carries 53 ayas and 5 rukus or 5 section this is very very important sura the word shura means consultation or counseling this is one of the significant commandment of allah subhanahu wa taala to the mankind to always consult people around you whether you are at your domestic duty or you are a political person or whatsoever you are doing in any walk of life you should consult the people around you your family and friends and then take a decision this is very important matter have been discussed in this sura in ayah number 38 that is why this sura called suratu shura ayah is wa amruhum shura bainahum so this is going to be very important discussion for today's quran session this surah opens with the letter hamim hamim this is called huruf e muqattaat the disjointed letters there are 29 surahs in the holy quran among all 114 surahs which are begins with such words called disjointed letters or huruf e muqattaat right from surah al baqarah alif lam mim and it goes towards the surah al qalam begins with noon so till the 29th para in these 29 paras of the quran we can read 29th time different disjointed letter some of them are repeated for example hami This surah begins with the Hamim Ain Sin Qaf. So there are seven surahs called Hamim Sisters. Seven surahs Hamim Ain Sin Qaf. This surah falls among these seven sisters. Hamim in the beginning Hamim Ain Sin Qaf. The significance of such disjointed letters is that the real meaning only belongs to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and his messenger. This is between them. so we should say just amanna wa saddaqna we believe and we affirm on that this is the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we talk about the period of revelation this surah is the makki surah somewhere it was revealed in makkah and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam several things including to be patient and forgive others and bear the hardships what's ever coming in your dawa way here are the major themes of this surah number one this surah conveys us the whole universe belongs to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the exclusive master and no one else has any part of share in his kingdom this surah talks about the risala of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is worldwide it is for every creature there is no prophet no messenger in any meaning after the holy prophet hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as this surah open with hamim ain sin qaf kazalika yuhi ilayka wa ila allazina min qablika allahu alaziz alhakim yuhi ilay reveal to you wa min qablik and before you not said wa min ba'dik after you because there is qiyamah after the holy prophet hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as he is khatamun nabiyyin seal of the prophet so this surah's major theme is that 
it talks about the finality of the prophethood proven by the first ayah of the surah and then this surah goes on <clears throat> in ayah number 13 ayah number 13 says shara alakum min ad-deen ma wassa bihi nuh wal ladhi awhayna ilayka wa ma wassayna bihi ibrahim wa musa wa isa an aqimu ad-deen wa la tatafarraqu fi so this ayah joins the deen in the form of Abraham, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, because the Judaism, Christianity, and Islam all claims to be Abrahamic religion. These are false in Abraham, Abrahamic tradition. So that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gathered them in one single ayah, just giving a message that these all are actually the old prophet brought the same message same candle la ilaha illallah they had one of the fundamental objective is to connect the man with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them recognize who is the lord who is the sustainer who is the creator so this ayah tells us about the abrahamic religion and their unity and says do not be scattered in different ways of life there is only one way of life which is abrahamic way and style of living and another theme of this surah it talks about the highness and authority of al-kitab as allah says allahu allazi anzal al-kitab bil haqqi wal mizan allah has revealed this book to you bil haqq with the haqq the right and truth wal mizan and with the greater balance so this surah talks about the authority of this Kitab means Quran. And another major theme of this surah is in ayah number 19. Allah promised Allah the risk and the nourishment is a total consideration by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He tied, he expand, he gave everything, he nourished. So that is why we should seek risk and nourishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. This is his hikmah, his wisdom to home, but to go. What to go? Light or vast, whatsoever award is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next one is ayah 23. It, it is called ayah mawaddat, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, And next, this surah talks about the 10 personality different traits in ayah number 43. So these are very, very important traits from ayah number 28 to 43. These 10 to 15 ayahs talks about 10 major personality traits and characters which every single believer, men and women should have. These are here. I'm sorry. These are from ayah number 36 to 43. Ayah number 36 opens it فَمَا أُوْتِيْتُ مِنْ شَيْنْ فَمَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَتْهُ فَمَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ وَأَبَقَى لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ Whatever pleasures you have been given is no more than a fleeting enjoyment of this worldly life but what is Allah is far better and more lasting for those who believe this is one those who believe Number two, and put their trust in their Lord, Tawakkul. This, these are the two personality traits. And then I number 37, Who avoid major sins, number three, and number four, and shame, shameful deeds, and forgive when angered. So number five, I number next 38. وَالَّذِينَ اسْتَجَابُوا لِرَبِّهِمْ وَأَخَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَأَمْرُهُمْ شُورَ بَيْنَهُمْ وَمِمَّا رَزَخْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِخُونَ Who respond to their Lord, establish prayer, conduct their affairs by mutual consultation and donate from what we have provided for them. So four more personality traits in this ayah number 38. And then ayah number 39 وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَهُمُ الْبَغْجِ هُمْ يَنْتَصِرُونَ and who enforce justice when wronged. Nine. Wajaza Usajiatin Sajiatum Misluha. 
فمن عفا واصلح فاجره على الله انه لا يحب الظالمين the reward of an evil deed is its equivalent but whoever pardons and see reconciliation then their reward is with allah he certainly does not like the wrong doers and this the last personality trait forgiving other this last more than uh, more towards the ayah number 43 so this is one of the surah's major theme and the next is ayah number 50 it talks about four different states when someone make dua wallah subhanahu wa ta'ala for offspring so of course this is the dua of every couple to have of supreme so allah says lillahi mulku samawati wal ardh yakhluqu ma yasha this is allah's kingdom yakhluqu ma yasha he creates whatever he wants yakhluqu ma yasha yahabu liman yasha wa inasa there are four states in total number 1 yakhluqu ma yasha yahabu liman yasha wa inasa sometime daughters wa yahabu liman yasha wa zukur sometime sons اللہ وما كان لبشر ان يكلمه الله الا وحيا او من وراء حجاب او يرسل رسولا اذا الله سبحانه وتعالى سين دايركت ريفيليشن او بيهايند ذا كرتن او وحيا او من وراء حجاب او يرسل رسولا اور سين هيز ميسنجر اور ذا انجل تو ذا بروفيت اور ميسنجر اند جيف ا ميسج سو ذيس ار ذا 3 ويز اوف ريفيليشن منشن هير اند انديد ذير ار 5 ويز اوف ريفيليشن تو ادر ريفيليشن ويز ار دايركت اون ذا هارت اند رينجينج ذا بيل mentioned in several narrations of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so these are the major themes but very very important thing of today's presentation is the different teachings and important lessons from this surah the first lesson of this surah is trust in allah tawakkul it is extracted from the ayah number 10 of this surah everyone knows the biggest personality trait of a successful person can possess is rely upon allah subhanahu wa taala he she just need to put his her decent effort and reasonable effort and then stop worrying about that and just rely on allah subhanahu wa taala so whatsoever allah subhanahu wa taala will award this is allah's gift for you this is award or you can say reward for you see the following ayah uh, as allah subhanahu wa taala command to his prophet وما اختلفتم فيه من شيء فحكمه الى الله ذلكم الله ربي عليه توكلت واليه اني سي تو ذا بليورز او بروفيت وات ايفر يو مي ديفر اباوت اتس ججمنت ريست وذ الله سبحانه وتعالى ذات از الله ماي لورد ان هيم اي بوت ماي تراست اند تو هيم اي اولويز ترن سو واتس يو ايفر بيبل دو وذ يو دي ديفر وذ يو دي ريت اني انيميتي وذ يو نو نيد تو وري اباوت ذات جست فوكس اون يور ميشن just do what is allah commands to you and have trust on allah subhanahu wa taala the second important teaching from this surah is the prefer akhira over the dunya i had 20 states man kana yuridu harsa akhirati nazid lahu fi harsi wa man kana yuridu harsa dunya nuqtihi minha wa ma lahu fil akhirati min nasib a believer need to work for the betterment of this life and hereafter of course but for the gains and the benefits of this world must not deceive him because you know uh, this world is all about fleeting pleasure play and amusement and temporary about whereas the hereafter is better eternal and lasting as compared to akhira so this ayah clearly states that whoever desires the harvest of the hereafter we will increase their harvest and whoever desires only the harvest of this world we will give them some of it but they will have no share in the hereafter the third teaching of this surah is don't rush and blind to make more money in this world this is ayah number 27 everyone dreams of living a fulfilled contented life 
but the only way is to stay satisfied with whatever has been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is no need to choose illegal and unlawful means to earn so uh, stay contented whatsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives or bless you because Allah gives everyone in perfect mayr as ayah 11 of this surah highlights ayah 27 this surah highlights walau basatullahu rizqa li ibadihi labaghaw fil ars walakin yunazzilu bi qadri ma yasha innahu bi ibadi khabirun basir had Allah given abundant provisions to all his servants, they would have certainly transgressed throughout the land. But he sends down whatever he wills in perfect maya. He is truly all aware, all seeing of his servants. The fourth teaching of this surah is decide mutually or mutual consultation. As the ayah number 38 states, وَالَّذِينَ سَجَابُ لِرَبِّهِمْ وَأَقَامُ الصَّلَىٰ who respond to their Lord, establish prayer, conduct their affairs by mutual consultation and donate from what we have provided for them. You know, Islam left is to the people to decide on the best way for them to discuss their daily life and daily matters. For the personal well-being, and welfare of the society or household matters or political or socio-political matters the key is to consult others and then make a decision so that is why we can learn from this ayah ayah number 38 number fifth is the patience and the forgiveness ayah 43 of this surah وَلَمَنْ صَبَرَ وَغَفَرَ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ الْمِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ the Quran demands a believer should be patient and ready to forgive others because patience is the key to success it builds self-control self-management whereas forgiveness is an essential act in keeping relationships strong so we strengthen our bonds with the forgiveness and patience and number 29 maintains and whoever endures patiently and forgives surely this is a resolve to spy to so these are the five teachings there are many more teachings as well here we are going to conclude today's presentation this one is wonderful chapter of the holy quran which is full with the teachings lessons and principles for the daily life and socio-political matters one should read it ayah by ayah and seek the light and implement the teachings in the daily life by this we conclude today's session hope you have learned and enlightened a lot with today's message of the Holy Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq and hidayah. Give us istiqama. Hoping to see you again in another study session of the Quran. Leave us a comment and appreciation. I welcome your suggestions.